Welcome to Calculus. In this playlist, we'll be going through James Stewart's calculus textbook. Let's take a look at the different chapters in this textbook. Chapter 1, Functions and Models. You can think of this like a pre-calculus, but we're going to skip Chapter 1. We're going to start with Chapter 2. And the reason is because when you think of pre-calculus, so a pre-calculus course, the course is designed to pick certain topics from algebra and trigonometry that are important to understand well before you go through calculus. But it's nothing new. It's topics taken from algebra or trigonometry. And so if you need, you can go through the algebra playlist or the trigonometry playlist, watch the full playlist or watch some of the videos, work some of the example problems. If you want to brush up on those subjects, or even as you're going through this calculus playlist, if you get to a topic and you feel like you need to understand the algebra or trigonometry of it a little bit better, then go find a specific video on that topic in the algebra or trigonometry playlist, work some of those example problems, and then come back. All right, but calculus starts in chapter two, limits and derivatives. Now, I understand why James Stewart puts derivatives in chapter two like this, in with limits but I don't think it's the most helpful for understanding kind of the story of calculus or the flow of calculus. And so the main purpose of calculus is that we want to be able to calculate the rate of change of functions at points on those function curves for all of the functions that, that we know. And we also want to be able to calculate the precise area under any curve, right? We know how to calculate the area under a triangle, but how, how, how do we calculate the area under any kind of curve? And you can think about this purely graphically, like the graphical area on a, on a curve, but it's more than that. It, it's the, the area under curves can represent something that's taking place in physical reality, right? If you have a cost function or you've got the, the speed of something, the speed versus a time or, or, or whatever, the area under the curve can represent something you're interested in. That's not, it has nothing to do with the literal area on the, on the piece of paper. And a similar idea with the rate of change of a curve at a point. And so the rate of change of curves, that's differentiation. That has to do with differentiation. The areas in the curve, that's integration. That has to do with integration. But the foundation of both of those is the idea of a limit. Limits were invented, and then from limits, using limits, came derivatives and integrals. And so in this first chapter, mainly what we're doing is learning what is a limit. How do you evaluate limits? Just we're, we're diving into limits in chapter two to where by the end of chapter two, we're completely comfortable with what a limit is and how to work, work with limits, work all kinds of different limits. We understand limits fully. And so to me, derivatives should be in chapter three with the differentiation rules. And I say that because, well, then why don't we have limits and derivatives and integrals? Because integrals are just as tied to limits as derivatives are. We just start with derivatives because they're, they're a little bit simpler than integrals. But we learn all about limits in chapter two, but then what we do is at the end of chapter two, we're introduced to what the derivative is. It's a limit applied to the situation of finding the rate of change at a point on a curve. Okay, in chapter three, we come up with rules to where we can easily calculate derivatives of all types of functions. We can do it quickly and easily. Right, that's the goal of calculus. We want to find these rates of change of, of functions fast, easy, no problem. In chapter four, we talk about applications of differentiation. Now, the main application, once once we've once we finish chapter three, then we've learned the main application of the of differentiation. If we have a function, we can find its derivative at any point on that function. We can find the instantaneous rate of change or the, or the rate of change at, the, at a point in that curve for pretty much any kind of function that we have. That's the application. That's the, that's the main application. Chapter four is just talking about kind of other types of applications, different ways you can apply differentiation. All right, chapter five is integrals. So integrals, we want to find the areas under curves. And so we're, when we start chapter five, we're introduced to how the, the limit is applied to find areas under curves. And if we come back here, that's what I'm, I'm thinking they should have done, James Stewart should have done, is you know how limits 
are applied to calculating the rate of change of curves. Just discuss that at the beginning of chapter three. Okay, but the integral is a little more complicated. We learn we learn the, the limit definition of the integral, like how the limit is used to get the areas under curves. And in chapter five, we also talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus, and that's where it was discovered how differentiation and, and integration are, are intimately connected. We'll see, we'll see how that works, right? They're not just these two separate, completely separate ideas. They're, they're more connected than, than you might think. We learned some techniques of integration. Chapter six talks about some applications of integration. But again, these are kind of all, once we can calculate the areas under curves for any function, that's the main application of integration. These are just offshoots of, of that. We learn more techniques of integration. We have a whole chapter because integration is is more complicated. So we need to we have a bunch of different techniques. More applications of integration in chapter eight. Chapter nine, differential equations. We're going to skip this chapter because because I'm going to have a full course playlist on differential equations. This is just giving you a it's like just a brief look at differential equations. But we're going to go into into diff eq and and uh, we're gonna have a go through a full textbook on, on differential equations chapter 10 parametric equations and polar coordinates you can think about this as kind of like you could you could classify this as algebra but it's it's probably too complicated to put in an algebra course so they put it here because just talking about parametric equations and polar coordinates just just like as 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 they are that has nothing to do with calculus Polar coordinates is just another coordinate system. So you have the Cartesian coordinate system, and you can also have polar coordinate system, a, a polar coordinate system, right? Well, well, we learned the coordinate system in algebra. So like whenever they introduced us to the Cartesian coordinate system in algebra, we could have then talked about the, the polar coordinate system. That has nothing to do with calculus. And parametric equations is, is, in, is this, in a similar way. We're, we're talking about there's different ways you can plot curves, we, we, we're familiar with y being a function of x, right? You have input x, you plot y, and you get curves, right? But you could, do, you could use polar coordinates to plot the curve if, if that's more convenient. You could use parametric equations to plot the curve. It just depends on what, what's best for the problem. And we're, we'll, we'll talk about both of these. But so both of these types of methods for plotting curves or functions are defined. And we, we, learn about, uh, we learn about them and how to work with them. And then also in chapter 10, we go into the calculus of it, though. How do you calculate the derivative of a parametric equation? How do you calculate derivatives in polar coordinates? How do you do integrals with parametric equations and in, in polar coordinates? Okay, the last chapter is infinite sequences in series. We learned about sequences in series at the end of algebra. In particular, in calculus, we're talking about infinite sequences in series. Now, you get to the end of calculus, you're tired. It's easy to kind of go through this chapter with half effort, but it's really important. You want to learn it well, and there's a couple of reasons why. So like a power series or a Taylor and Maclaurin series, that's when you can, you can write a a function like e to the x or cosine of x, you can write it as an infinite series. An infinite series, it's, it's in a simpler form. Now, that sounds way more complicated, right? An infinite series, but you'll see in a lot of research papers or even like graduate level textbooks, what's done is that the first three or four terms of, it, of the infinite series representation are used. And, and, that, and that's, that's deemed accurate enough for the problem. And, and so they can use that to solve the problem. They can represent functions as an infinite series, take the first three or four terms, and that's plenty of enough accuracy, and use that to solve a problem. You'll see this a lot in research papers wh where series are used to represent functions. Okay, another application of these infinite sequences in series, when you get to partial differential equations... So differential equations is for single variable calculus. That's calculus one and two. Calculus three is multivariable calculus. Well, differential equations is for single variable calculus, solving differential equations with single variables. Partial differential equations is solving differential equations with multiple variables. Solutions in partial differential equations a lot of times are represented as series. 
as these infinite sums. Now, again, what am I going to do with an infinite sum that's so complicated? No, you can, if, if you actually want to use the solution, you take the first three or four terms, whatever accuracy you need to get your solution, right? So like, there's a lot of physical phenomena that take place with multiple variables, like, a, like, like heat transfer if, or, or whatever. If you're solving a, a system with multiple dimensions, which is normal, right? Three dimensions, you're going to have multiple variables. You might have these differential equations with multiple variables, you want to solve the differential equation, that's going to require partial differential equation. You're going to want to understand these infinite sequences in series. So, th so this chapter is really important. Okay, then after chapter 11, this is all calculus three. Chapter 12 starts calculus three. That's multivariable calculus. And we'll have another playlist on multivariable calculus.